Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to source a SQL file inside of your GORM IDE container while running MySQL. So Colt already has a video for that. It's video number 95 in the course. It's called Running SQL Files. Unfortunately, it's for the older version of Cloud9, which we're no longer using anymore. So I'm going to show you the updated instructions for doing this with your GORM IDE container. So we have the commands that Colt uses from that lecture and let's go ahead and plug them in over here. So the first thing we wanna do is open up our MySQL command line. I already have mine open, but just as a reminder, the command for that is mysql-ctl space cli. And that'll open us up inside of MySQL. Great. So now inside of MySQL, we need to create a database. So we'll just use the create database command and then we'll call it cat underscore app. Now that the database is created, we want to use cat underscore app. Great. Now this is where Colt gets started. He's gonna create this table with the, the cats table that has the cat ID, name, age, and a primary key of cat ID. And so this is a multi-line command right here. So you may start typing down here inside of your command line. And so you say, okay, create table, cats, and then you go to the next line, you get your nice little arrow here, and then you open the parentheses, go to the next line, cat ID and then maybe somewhere in here you put a quote on accident and you don't notice it or some other typo and then you put your comma you go to the next line oh, great there's that quote so because it's multi-line you can't go back and fix it the only way to fix it because it shows you here that it's missing a quote you just put the double quote press return or enter once you get back to this arrow you go backslash C and that'll clear out the query and you can start all over again. That's really frustrating. There's got to be a better way. And in fact, there is. So the easier way to do this is to create a file over here inside of your main container. Uh, so MySQL2 is the main container folder for your workspace. Right click, go to new at the top and click on file. And then right here where it says file name, we're just going to call this query.sql and then click on OK. Again, inside your workspace, your main container folder here, MySQL2 or whatever yours is called. Yours will be named after whatever your container is named. And so once you have that set up, click OK. And here's this file right here. If it doesn't open automatically, just double click it and then it'll open right here. What we're going to do with this file is we're going to type the query here. In fact, you can even paste if you want to, but just for the sake of building some of that muscle memory, we'll go ahead and type it. So up here inside this new file that we created, we're going to type create table cats and then if you want you can go to the next line you can tab out like Colt does and then open that up and then go back right here and so then we do cat underscore ID int not null auto increment comma and just to save you some time <laughs> I changed my mind I'm gonna actually paste this stuff in okay great so now we have all this in here and let's just throw it off by putting a quote in here randomly, just a single quote, not a double quote. And you can already see the syntax is highlighted to indicate the improper quote there, but let's just ignore that. And so let's say you have a typo similar to this one. And now down here inside of the MySQL command line, this is where we're going to run this file using the source command. Now there's one thing that's really important. In order to make this as easy as possible, you need to remember to open the MySQL command line from the same directory where query.sql is. And I'll tell you why. So I'm going to go ahead and exit. And you can see I'm inside of workspace MySQL2. And if I run the ls command, which is the list command, it'll show all files and folders inside of the current directory that I'm inside of. So if I run that, you'll see that query.sql lives inside that directory. If you run that command, the ls command, and you don't see your query.sql file, then you are inside of the wrong directory and you do not want to run the MySQL command line command here in a second that we're going to run unless you can see that. And the reason is, if we run the MySQL command line from the same directory where we have the query.sql file, then we can very easily run the SQL file from inside of MySQL using the source command. So that's a mouthful. Let me just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to type mysql-ctl-cli. 
And now what we've done is we have started the MySQL command line from the same directory where we have that query.sql file. Now, the first thing we want to do is use the cat app database. So we can just type use cat underscore app and then put a semicolon. It tells us that the database has been changed. Now we want to run this code in here. And rather than typing it in here, we just want to run it from this file. So the simplest way to do that, and be sure that this file right here, query.sql, has been saved first. So you can go up here, click inside the file, click File, Save. And once it's been saved, then go back down to the MySQL command line and just run source, put a space, and then query.sql. Now, see this error right here? You have an error in your SQL syntax. Check the manual that corresponds to the quotation in your primary key. That's telling us that we have a typo. All we have to do to fix that is go up here to our file, find where the typo is, get rid of it, resave our file, and then go back down here, press the up arrow one time to recall the last command that we used, which is source query.sql, and then run it again. So we press enter. And this time, it runs successfully. It says query OK, zero rows affected, and then it ran in 1.15 seconds. And so we can figure out if this worked. Well, this tells us that it worked, but if we have a second check we can run, which is desk, which stands for describe in this case, and then cats. Put a semicolon. And what we get here, you have to make it full screen for it to look nice. But this is a little outline of our table. And so this shows us all the columns that are inside of our cats table. So this is working how we wanted it to. Great. Now, we have some more commands that we want to run on that database. So I copy these. Go back to your query.sql file. And you're going to replace the contents of it with whatever it is that you want to run in MySQL. So we no longer need the create table cats code, right? We've already run it successfully. So we can select it and delete it and then paste in this new code. OK, so important, right? We have to save the file. So file, save. The little asterisk up here disappears, and it turns into an X. That's what we want. Now, in order to run it, we go down here. And we're already inside of the cat app database. But in, in whatever instance that you are no longer in the database, just make sure that you run that use cat app command. And so that'll ensure that you're inside of the cat app database. Now, the command, again, is source query.sql. And it runs successfully. It inserts these two columns, or two rows, rather. And then we select all from cats, and it displays it. So you can see we have one row that got inserted, the second row. And then here's the result of the select query. And you can do this continually throughout the course. Anytime you need to create a table or interact with columns and rows inside the table, all you have to do is write your query right here, save the query.sql file, file save, and then down here inside of the terminal, as long as you're inside the correct database with the use command, right? So once you're inside the correct database, then all you have to do is run source query.sql. And it'll run that for you. And again, if you have a typo somewhere and you run it, it'll tell you that there's a typo. So you just go back, you find the typo, you fix it, you resave the file, and then you run it again. And this is the easiest way to interact with your database using your code editor to create the queries and then running them with the source command. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the Q&A and we'll help you from there. Thanks a lot and we'll catch you in the next video.